Hi, welcome to this Corp Maths video. In this video, we're going to go through the video solutions to the dimensional analysis practice questions. If you need any extra help on dimensional analysis, if you go to corpmaths.com forward slash contents and scroll down to video number 97, there's a dedicated video tutorial there on dimensional analysis. Alternatively, you could scan this QR code. But in this video, we're going to focus on the video solutions to the practice questions. So let's get started. So question number one. Question number one says this table shows some expressions. We've got some expressions. They are L plus M plus N mn and 2 pi m and the letters l m and n represent lengths so we've got these lengths and we've been asked to take an appropriate column so take an appropriate column for each expression to show whether the expression represents a length an area a volume or none of those so let's start off with l plus m plus n well if we've got a length and we add another length we get a bigger length and if we add another length we get a bigger length so the answer would just be a length so l plus m plus n is a length mn well, that's a length multiplied by a length. And if you think of a rectangle or something like that, whenever you multiply a length by a length, you get an area. So M times N, well, that's a length times a length, which is an area. And finally, we've got two pi M. Well, that's two, which is a number, times pi, well, that's gonna be a bigger number, and times by a length, well, that's just gonna be a bigger length. So that's just gonna be a length because you've got M, which is a length, and you're multiplying it by a number, which is two pi, which is gonna be a bigger length. So L plus M plus N is a length, mn that's a length times a length and a length times a length is an area and 2 pi m well sometimes i say to students just ignore the numbers so ignore the 2 and ignore the pi and you're just left with m so it's going to be a length or you've got 2 pi which is the number and you're multiplying that by m which is a length and a number times a length would just be a bigger length so that's it or you know a number such as 2 pi it's going to be a bigger length okay let's have a look at our next question question number two so question number two we've been given some expressions we've got x y z We've got x and then in brackets y plus z. We've got 3x plus y squared. We've got x plus y and we've got x squared plus y squared. And we're told that x, y and z represent lengths and two of the expressions represent areas. And we're to tick the two boxes where they represent areas. So we've got x, y, z. That's a length times a length times a length. Well, length times a length is an area times a length is a volume. So that's a volume. Next, we've got, and let's do the brackets first, y plus z. Well, that's a length plus a length. That's going to be a bigger length. And then we're multiplying it by x, which is a length. Well, length times a length is an area so that's an area and we're asked to tick the boxes or tick the expressions that represent areas so we're going to tick there next we've got 3x well that's going to be a length times 3 it's just a length and y squared that's y multiplied by itself well y times y is a length times a length which is an area so we've got a length plus an area well, that's inconsistent if you said seven centimeters plus four centimeters squared that doesn't make sense so it's going to be none of those so none of those so we're not going to tick there that's not an area x plus y that's a length plus a length well a length plus a length is a length it's just a bigger length so that's not an area and finally hopefully this one will be an area because we're asked to tick two well x squared well that's going to be x times x a length times a length is an area y squared well that's y times y it's a length times a length is, which is an area an area plus an area will be a bigger area so that's going to be an area so we're going to tick there so the two expressions that represent areas would be x bracket y plus z close brackets and x squared plus y squared and that's it okay let's have a look at our next question question number three so we've got this table and we're told the letters a b and c represent lengths and we've been asked to tick an appropriate column to show whether they represent uh, the expressions represent a length an area a volume or none of those so let's start off with this one we've got a b c that's a length times a length times a length a length times a length is an area times a length is a volume so that's a volume 2a plus 2b well that's going to be a length times 2 that's a bigger length a length times 2 is a bigger length and a length plus a length is just a bigger length so that's going to be a length and finally a squared plus c well a squared that's a times a that's a length times a length which is an area plus a length well an area plus a length figure that doesn't make sense so it's going to be none of those okay let's have a look at next question question number four okay question number four we've got four rows a b c d and we've got these columns which are expression length area volume and none of those so we've got these expressions and we're told that x y and z are to represent length so we've got the first one's been done for us y z well, that's a length times a length which is an area okay next we've got x plus y z well x is a length y z that's a length times a length which is an area a length plus an area again that doesn't make sense you know four miles plus three square miles that doesn't make sense so it's going to be none of those okay x cubed that's a length times a length times a length because you're multiplying by itself and by itself again a length times a length is an area times a length will be a volume and then this one we've got x y and then in brackets x plus z well x plus z well, we've got a length plus a length which is a bigger length we're then going to multiply that by 
a length and a length. Well, a length times a length is an area times a length is a volume. So that's a volume. Okay, so we've done the table, part A. Part B says explain your answer for expression B. So we need to explain why this is none of these, so why this is inconsistent, so let's explain that. So X is a length, and then we're adding an area. So let's write that down. And that's it, so we've just written down X is a length, X, Y is an area, and adding these is inconsistent. So that's it, that's why it's none of these. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. Okay, in question number five, we're told that x, y, and z represent length, so x, y, and z represent lengths, and we've been asked to say whether each of the expressions represents a length, an area, a volume, or none of those. Okay, so we've got x, y, z, that's a length times a length times a length, well a length times a length is an area, times a length is a volume, so that represents a volume, which is v, volume. We've now got y, z, and then in brackets x plus y squared, well x is a length, y squared, that's y times y, that's a length times a length, which is an area. A length plus an area, that's inconsistent, so that means the whole thing's inconsistent, so that's none of these. xy plus xz, well xy, that's a length times a length, which is an area. xz, that's a length times a length, which is an area. And an area plus an area would be a bigger area, so that's an area. And finally, x squared y, well x squared, that's a length times a length, which is an area, times y, which is a length, that's going to be an area times a length, which is a volume. So we've got volume, none of these, an area, and a volume. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number six. So question number six, we've been given some expressions, and we've been asked to say whether they represent a length, an area, a volume, or none of those. So we've got x squared, y squared. Well, x squared, that's going to be an area, x times x, that's a length times a length, which is an area. y squared, that's an area, because a length times a length is an area. And an area times an area, well, that would be that would be four dimensions, that's going to be beyond volume, so that's none of those, okay? Next, we've got x squared plus y squared, so that's an area plus an area, that's a bigger area. We're dividing it by a length, and an area divided by a length would then just be a length, so that's going to be a length, because an area divided by a length is a length. Think of if you knew the area of a rectangle, and then you divided it by the length of the rectangle, you get the width of the rectangle, so an area divided by a length is just a length. And then our last one here, we've got y plus z, well, that's a length plus a length, which is a bigger length. Now we're dividing that by a length. Well, that would be none of those, because if you've got a length and you're dividing it by a length, if you had the length of a rectangle and you divide it by the width of the rectangle, that's not going to give you anything that's meaningful. It'll just tell you how many times bigger it is, perhaps. Um, okay, so that would be then none of those. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. Okay, question number seven. So question number seven, we're told that A, B, and C represent lengths, and we've got some expressions, and we've been asked to tick the expressions that represent areas. So we've got two C cubed. Well, C cubed, that's a volume. A length times a length times a length is a volume. And multiplied by two would be a volume, so that's a volume. So that's not an area. Next one, we've got pi multiplied by C cubed. Well, C cubed is a volume. And we're multiplying it by pi, that's going to be still a volume, a bigger volume. Now we're then dividing that by a length. And if you do like a volume of a prism and you divide it by a length, you'd get the area at the front. So that's going to be like or an area. So it's going to be an area. A volume divided by a length is an area. So it's going to be area. And that's one we're going to tick. Okay, next, pi AC. Well, it's a length times a length, which is an area. To multiply it by pi would just be a bigger area. So that's an area. And actually, we've been asked to take three expressions that represent areas. So there's two of them. BC, that's a length times a length, which is an area, plus a length, well, an area plus a length, it doesn't make sense, it's none of those. Next, we've got A plus C, that's a bigger length, and then we're gonna multiply it by two numbers, so that's just gonna be a bigger length, so it's a length. So hopefully the last one's gonna be an area, let's have a look and see. A plus B, well, length plus a length is a length, a bigger length. We're then squaring it, which means we're multiplying it by itself, well, length times a length is an area, and then multiplying by five is a bigger area, so that is an area. So we're gonna tick that one, and that's it and this scroll down and check that's us finished so these have been the video solutions to the dimensional analysis practice questions i hope you found this video useful if you need any extra help on dimensional analysis you've got to corpmavs.com forward slash contents and scroll down to video number 97 there's a dedicated video tutorial there on dimensional analysis alternatively you can scan this qr code but in this video we're focused on the video solutions to the practice questions i hope you found it useful if you have found it useful please like the video and please subscribe to the youtube channel thank you cheers bye